Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk Cal Brook versus Jojo Dan. Now, let me be clear here. I'm probably going to lose this bet. Right? I believe I should lose this bet. Between these two guys, I think Cal Brook is the more talented fighter. But, and let me add, the fight's in Cal Brook's backyard, Sheffield. And Jojo Dan doesn't have knockout power. So you're talking about a favorite son in Cal Brook coming home after winning the title overseas. Right? This is his trip back to the crib. Right? The fans are grateful. They love him. He's popular in Sheffield. He's rewarding Sheffield with his first title defense. They're going to be there screaming at the top of their lungs. If you get weak-minded judges scoring this fight, as you can imagine, if Kelbrook comes this close with any punch on Jojo Dan, the crowd's going to be screaming and the judges are going to be giving Kelbrook that round. Right? So make no mistake, Kelbrook, for talent reasons and for political reasons, should win this fight. If it goes to a decision, right, the odds are heavily stacked against Jojo Dan. No question about it. But understand here, we're trying to beat the casino. We're looking for opportunities. Part of our betting portfolio are going to be on bets we think we'll likely lose, but for which the casino is offering us such a good risk-reward proposition that we're going to take them anyway because life's uncertain. The current odds are 8 to 1 for Jojo Dan, the underdog in this fight. 8 to 1. Right? Bet 10 bucks. If you win, you leave the casino with 90. The 10 you bet return to you plus $80, right? Eight times what you bet on the fight, right? The bet I'm likely to make on this fight once the odds are posted is going to be on JoJo Dan, right? I love Kel Brook. I think Kel Brook, quite frankly, prime Kel Brook, prime Kel Brook would give Floyd Mayweather more problems than Manny Pacquiao would. I think Cal Brook moves around the ring exceptionally well. I think he shifts weight exceptionally well. He has hand speed, right? He keeps getting better and better. He can tie you up. He's two-handed. There's a lot of great things about Cal Brook. Here's why I'm taking JoJo Dan apart from the odds, right? It's because Cal Brook was attacked with a machete just a few months ago, right? The wound to his legs, right? In other words, a big part of his game looked major, looked significant. He had numbness in his legs. Right? Now, I have problems with the machete attack for two reasons. The first is the severity of the wounds. Right? A guy tells you he has numbness in his legs, he can't put weight on his legs on the front end. That hints at nerve damage. Right? You know, I wonder how a guy can recover quickly enough 
from a machete attack that's several inches long on his legs to fight in a championship fight in boxing right for a major sanctioning body just a few months later right even if I thought Cal Brook was gonna win this fight and the odds were much more narrow I'd be hesitant to take Cal Brook because of this injury understand too that boxing really is a stamina game right your legs might be fine early but if the other guy's still around and let's say the seventh eighth ninth tenth rounds then your body might start to betray you you could be in great shape for a weekend warrior a casual athlete but not be in professional athlete shape right so the severity of the wound to me makes me cautious about Kel Brook I think it creates an opening for his opponent I'm not sure if I buy that Kel Brook is back at a hundred percent you also know the way egos work in boxing every champion thinks they're invincible Kel Brook might feel a twinge in his leg every now and then but might think he's Cal Brook. He's invincible. He's unbeaten. He's just won the title. Who's to tell him otherwise? So the severity of the injury to me gives Dan an opening. The second reason I'm very concerned about this whole machete thing is because I don't believe Cal Brook's version of events right I'm sorry but I just don't see guys hopping out of the shadows with machetes in my everyday life right I haven't been walking down the street and have that happen to me nor have I been walking down the street and then suddenly someone hops out of the shadows with a machete across the street from me and attacks someone right that just doesn't happen this story kind of reminds me of the Mike Tyson Dapper Dan Mitch Green story right you hear the story and then you think to yourself wow Mike's putting himself in situations where crazy things could happen right well Cal Brook all I can say is I hear this machete story and I really have to wonder about the rest of Cal Brook's life right I'm just wondering exactly what's going on there it seems like there's some you know very sharp objects in Cal Brooks life right there's some risks and some dangers so since I don't buy the machete story and since I think there might be more going on I really wonder how focused he's gonna be for his next fight let's also talk about the opponent this is the worst kind of opponent for Cal Brook to fight. Understand, Jojo Dan is an arm puncher. Now, I know when you're watching a fight and someone's an arm puncher, the announcer will say, oh, he's not hitting hard enough. Oh, he should put leverage on his punches, blah, blah, blah. But understand, boxing is rock, paper, scissors. If you're an arm puncher, you actually have some advantages you're cutting corners as an arm puncher because you look good you're focused on style you're focused on presentation right you're not focused on badly hurting your opponent you look good in the ring there's an optical illusion going on fancy you land four or five punches and then they just assume the opponent is hurt because if you were throwing those punches with bad intentions and leverage the opponent would be hurt so Jojo Dan is gonna come in and he's gonna look good he's gonna be throwing punches in bunches he can his volume will be higher than a typical opponent he's gonna look flashier than a typical opponent 
he's going to look like he's working the head and the body. Right? Because his game is built on style, he's going to be bending. Punches are going to fly over his head. He's going to look smooth. He's going to look like he's letting his hands go. Right? Understand, too, that Jojo Dan has great legs. Right? He's not a plant in the ring. He's moving. It's in and out. Great balance. Of course he'd have great balance because he's not putting much into his punches. His focus is more on his balance and his style than it is on hurting you with power shots. And to top it off, he's very aggressive. So he's going to be in and out being busy. He's going to be on his front foot at times against Cal Brook. He's going to be moving around the ring. I believe he's a tougher opponent for Cal Brook than was former champion Sean Porter. Right? Understand, too, Dan's only lost to one man. Selkuk ate it. I can tell you the first fight, the scoring, in my opinion, was a farce. I thought Dan won that fight. If you... Do some Google searches here on YouTube. You're going to see that before that fight happened, I believe I picked Dan, who was then something like a greater than three to one long shot to beat Aiden because I thought Dan just moved too well and had too much volume. Right? That Aiden fight was in Aiden's backyard. Back when Aiden was more highly regarded. Right? Let's just say that it's even questionable whether Dan lost to Aiden. Aiden did better in the second fight. But just understand, Dan has never been beaten down in the ring. Right? Now, there are holes in this game. No doubt, Prime Kell Brook would take advantage of the holes. Right? Dan can get hit with a jab. He doesn't have great defense. In other words, he looks good in the ring. He's moving. He's throwing combinations and stuff like that. But then you notice the other puncher is landing shots. I would encourage you to look at the Bizier fight. In fact, both of the fights. Bizier lands a lot of punches on Jojo Dan. Right? In my opinion, Jojo Dan is open for counters. But understand. Right? Jojo Dan is the kind of savvy fighter who makes you pay when you come after him. Sometimes you're going to run into his head. Right? His head is part of his arsenal, and he's smooth about it. In other words, this guy is a dandy. Right? Hard to, you know, put it this way, hard to outstyle him in the ring. He's going to look smooth. He's going to force you to exert energy. That's bad for an opponent who was recently the victim of a machete attack. Right? So, at 8 to 1, I'm taking Jojo Dan because he's the better opportunity. This is simply an odds play for me. I'm likely to lose this bet. I think Cal Brook should win the fight. But Kell Brook's coming off a machete attack that you need to research. Kell Brook was in the hospital, folks, for days. That was just a few months ago. For days. The kind of fighter Kell Brook should be fighting is a guy who's more stationary than Jojo Dan. Right? Who's less charismatic in the ring than Jojo Dan. Who's more obvious who Cal Brook can move away from when the action gets a little heavy. That's not Jojo Dan. This is a very bad stylistic matchup. At 8-1, to one, count me in. Hell, I'd take Jojo Dan at 4-1 to one odds. Right? I'm not going to bet a lot on this fight. But then again, if you're going to give me 8-1 to one odds, hell, I'll take that. 
right? What I'm not going to do, though, is hedge the play. I prefer hedging. You know that. The problem is Kell Brook's power is underrated. Right? Kell Brook's game might have changed. If he's in the ring and he's not able to move around the ring as much as he'd like, he might actually start sitting down on his punches, throwing a higher percentage of KO punches. Right? Let me also say, too, that Kell Brook could look incredibly bad in this fight. He could look as bad as Danny Garcia looked against Mauricio Herrera. That's a good analogous fight, right? Herrera, live underdog, fighting in Puerto Rico. Looked good in the bout, didn't have a chance on the judges' scorecards, right? If Kell Brook looks bad, but this fight goes the distance, it's going to take a very brave judge to pick against him. Let's just be aware of the political dynamics in boxing. Right? Nonetheless, I'm taking the underdog because I believe this could be a train wreck for Cal Brook. If he's out there and his legs give him problems, even if he's winning the fight, if his legs start to go numb, and let's face it, He's going to be pushing his body, right? This is a championship fight. If his legs start to twingle and he doesn't feel good, don't be surprised if he gives up his title on the stool, right? You know, he might just not come out for a round, right? Vitaly Klitschko once gave up the heavyweight title, gave up his unbeaten record because his shoulder slipped out during a fight, right? It happens. Here you're dealing with a guy who was attacked with a machete. If Kell Brook were a member of your family and he were involved in some intense athletic competition after a machete attack, you would understand if the guy just felt after a while that his legs weren't ready, right? So I'm going with the underdog here. It's an unhedged play. It's a small bet. But I like the 8-1 to odds, and I like the activity of JoJo Dan. I think a stylist who throws a lot of arm punches and who looks good in the ring even when he's not hurting his opponent, right? A guy who has beaten people like Steve Forbes, right? Busy ate twice. I think that guy's a dangerous opponent for a guy who hasn't fought since winning the championship and has been attacked with a machete since then. I'm going with the underdog here as an odds play. Pay close attention to the line in this fight. It's currently at 8-1. to one. If it jumps from 8-1 to one and gets higher, and that sometimes happens as you get closer to a fight and you have a charismatic champ like Kell Brook, and make no mistake, Kell Brook is loved in Sheffield, right? If this line gets even higher, then I'll be increasing my position on JoJo Dan. 8-1 to one is simply too much of an opportunity to pass up. I expect to lose this bet. But understand, I'll make a losing bet if I think the chance at a reward offsets the risk in the pricing. I'm going with Cal, excuse me. I'm going with Jojo Dan in this one. The 8 to 1 is much too high. In my opinion, this line should have been something like 2 to 1. It's 8 to 1. I've got to take that. Keep in mind too. Jojo Dan has never been knocked out. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisoryandwirevip.com. Thanks for stopping by.